everybody, it's Phil from Zade Comics, the writer and co-creator of Magic Cop, a graphic novel launching on Indiegogo in August, and just one half of the two best looking brothers in all of comics. And today we're doing another comic review. This week marks the third issue of Valiant's um, series, which is seemingly going to be a mini-series, Punk Mambo. Uh, now, I didn't realize that this is only going to be five issues, and hopefully it actually brings out, out a, a full series monthly, because I'm really digging this book, and we're going to look right at the beautiful cover um, by Dan Brereton, this amazing paint style. Uh, Punk Mambo, you know, giving you the British F off symbol there with all these zombies and just his composition is great. You got the that golden triangle action here that we see in a lot of illustrations. Um, most notably, Frank Frazetta would always put that, that uh, golden triangle. Super appealing to the eyes, as we talked about in previous videos. And, uh, you know, Punk Mambo, you. I, I kind of, I think I dug the first cover better because she kind of looked a little thicker, but uh, she's looking like a badass here as always, and let's get right into it. Of course, that little section telling you about who Punk Mambo is with a sick David Mack illustration in the background, and right pick up right where we left off from issue two when uh, Marie Lavu got sacked up for a lack of a better term by uncle gunny sack literally put put into a brown sack and carried away um to recap here you know of course i did review the first two videos so you can go watch that but uh, she uh, punk mom was in haiti trying to help the haitian pantheon of gods out because uncle gunny sack this huge demon ass character who we'll see in this issue is kidnapping all the loa of these uh these gods you know the, these guys so um yosef here is all pissed off at punk mambo because he says that she let uncle gunny sack just sweep up sweep up madam uh, or marie lavu and just so we could track him just so punk mambo could uh know where he's going and you know she denies that she said she didn't know what was going to happen but now this these are their cards were dealt and we have to deal with it and she's going to go and track him hunt him down and kill him and joseph says i can't be a part of that i can't help you out because you don't have the respect for these gods that you should and you know it's kind of like i don't agree with him at all because she's she's getting stuff done and as we'll see in this issue um it bites him in the ass for not going going with her. So now Punk Mambo gets to this old um, salt farming, you know, plantation kind of. I think it's it, not salt, it's sugar cane plantation, I believe. And um, that is where her spear has tracked Uncle Gunny Sack to. And she's going to infiltrate it, which is, this is kind of a little too subtle for me. I had to uh, go back a few panels when I saw that she was tentative in color. But she makes herself invisible, walks past the staff, um, and as we can see, kind of that they are the like the voodoo gang members that Uncle Gunny Sack uh, has around him. So she knows something's up here, and she feels the magic inside. We see all these uh, spirits that are in this uh, place, and she thinks they're pr uh, prisoners here doing magic, and uh, you know they're mediums, they're sorcerers and witches that have been gathered here. Uh, and held here by armed guards, so she thinks they're prisoners. Um, but the the internal monologue ends with these spirits vanishing, and someone walking out, and we're introduced to a new character. Uh, seemingly the main antagonist here, his name is Azair, and his kind of magic power is he has an aura around him that depletes all magic. So when he walked down uh, into the room, all the spirits vanished away because they couldn't be near him. And he tells Punk Mambo that her powers don't work when when she's near him. So it's kind of cool writing here by, by Cullen having 
this character that is a super powerful voodoo priestess uh, that can basically do anything through magic, right? That's kind of the issue when you get into characters like Dr. Fate, John Constantine. They can do whatever they want because magic is so vast and, and limitless. But you have this, this you know, uh, contrasting element and villain that shuts down all magic around him. So now Punk Mambo is just, she's just a, a human, basically. Back in uh, the congregation, you know, Joseph comes back to the, to talk to the, the Loa and the gods there, talking about how Punk Mambo is reckless, she has no respect for the gods, and she shouldn't have been chosen for, for this mission. Um, and the gods basically tell him she's out there, she's fighting for us, she's trying to get her Loa back that she had befriended, and trying to, you know, figure out this issue that we have, and you're here. You know, so his pride is hurting him because he's not helping her out. And as we see here, in fact, his pride that led him back to the congregation so they could, you know, he can move the Loa out of where they are just led the enemies and Uncle Gunny Sack in the background here directly to the Pantheon of Gods. And uh, that's not good because when Uncle Gunny Sack is around, some gods are going to get sacked. Back at the plantation, um, we get some dialogue here. And we learn about this Azair guy and how his, his parents were sorcerers. And he didn't get any of those powers or abilities, but he got the ability to, you know, shut down magic. And he's also able to see her, so uh, with his you know glowing red eyes when she was invisible. And basically, he wants to watch her get the crap beat out of her. His gang just jumps her because she doesn't have any powers. Uh, so with this big, really gruesome beating scene that um, Adam Gorham is just killing, like the center panel is just a snapshot out of. Like, like a scene from History of Violence, like that is, or like American History X, like just blood flying, and uh, she she puts up a fight. She bites the, the guy, the bike bites a chunk out of a guy's neck, and you get this really cool illustration of all this blood around her mouth. And she says the worst part of it isn't that he's just watching, is that he lets her run off, and it's like a game for him. She is chased through the woods, uh, and she says that he doesn't even care if she gets away if she gets away because she doesn't really mean anything to him. And once she has reached far enough where um, she's out of the the distance of that magic, you know, uh, aura that shuts down all of her powers. And you can see all these guys that are chasing her just get viscerated by magic and explode into wells of blood. So pretty cool action in this comic. Uh, the, it's very gruesome, more gruesome than the other ones, um, dealing with a lot of her blood and all, you know, these are human humans. A lot of times when you're dealing with monster books, they can get around the matureness by taking the monster blood and making it a weird color and, you know, it's not as important or uh, mature when it's monsters being cut in half. But this this is pretty cool. This the the sea of corn and the blood flat fountains there. Walking back to the town, getting to the congregation, and this panel right here. This is awesome. Just that profile shot. Her with the blood around her mouth. She looks like she's not having a good day, but I would not want to cross her. Really, really sick panel there from Adam. And she realizes that everybody in the congregation was slaughtered by Uncle Gunnysack and his, his little gang. And Joseph's there. And Joseph still has that chip on his shoulder. He's blaming her while Punk Mambo is collapsing in her arms. She said, you know, you left... Um, where were you? And, <laughs> but 
you know, he's saying that out of anger at himself. He said, I fled, you know, he sacrificed um, his own gods to stay alive. And he's, he's crying. At first he's blaming her, but it's because he's projecting of the, the anger that seemingly he has for himself for, you know, doing this and having this happen to his gods. So now they have to work together to get their gods back. And that's where it ends. We get this really cool, um, you know, snap, snapshot of what's to come in next issue, which I really love. I don't know if all Valiant Comics do this. It's a great idea. Uh, I've never read any other Valiant Comics, but this is really cool. Like, coming up in the next issue, and it shows some panels from that. And they've been doing this throughout all of Punk Mambo, and I really dig it. Um, they should do that more in mainstream comics for monthlies. Um, so yeah, th this issue was awesome. Uh, it's still going all strong from the first issue. The art is great. The cover is great. The story is really good. The, the cliffhangers that they're leaving you on uh, monthly at the end of the issue are really cool moments. And there's, you know, some awesome moments in this book. It's really good. We get to see a side of Punk Mambo we haven't seen because she's powerless, she doesn't have her magic, so she has to get scrappy and fight to survive, because if she doesn't have her magic, she could die. Uh, so yeah, if you guys dug this video and this book, let me know what you're thinking about it in the comments. Pick it up, go to your local comic book store and buy this book, support the guys that are making it. It's a really fun one. If you guys love um, like monster hunting book, books, magic books, like Hellboy, Constantine, you know, Hellblazer, um, Vertigo stuff. This is, you know, it's about Vertigo. We're going to get now that there's no Vertigo anymore. Rest in peace. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm a comic writer myself. I'm coming out with a book called Magic Cop. It has a lot of magic elements in it, hence the name. It is a 1980s fantasy crime book. So magic detectives hunting down murderers and uh, you know, sex traffickers that are um, trafficking mermaids into the city to become prostitutes. So check check that out on zadecomics.com. You could read a free issue of that on there when you sign up for our mailing list. And we are launching our Indiegogo in August. So um, you'll get you know updates and news if you follow me on social media and get onto our mailing list. And of course, we always post new videos about that and the progress of our comic every week. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.